How you guys doing? Wow, man, you guys are kicking today, kicking. All right, so glad you're here today. Thank you for coming to Freedom Church. So glad you took the time out of your busy lives to be able to do that. Hey, last week we kicked off a brand new series called The Struggle is Real. And that is a, a, a slang saying now that when people are having a tough time, they'll hashtag it, they'll post it, or something to where that they're saying, I am having a difficult time. Today, when I'm talking about this, and we kicked it off last week, I'm talking in the terms of this technological, savvy generation that we're living in, because people are, are living for likes, and they're longing for love. And let me say to you, if you're here today, you're brand new, first time here, thank you for coming, or you weren't able to be here last week for the first installment of this series, and you kind of would like to be up to, up to speed on it, what we talked about last week, I talked about the secret of contentment from the Apostle Paul talking to the Philippian church, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you'd like to know the full gist of that message, if you're here, if you have a smart device, you can download that. Just simply go to the App Store, download Freedom Church Gallatin, or you can go to our website. You can listen to it by audio, watch it by video, and all those kind of cool things. But other than that, I'm so glad that you are here because as, a, as when it comes to technology, I love leveraging technology, but I do not want technology to master my life. I only want to follow the master, Jesus Christ. And here's the truth. There are many forms of technology today. When you look at technology, there's the internet. Everything on the internet. If you have an issue, you can go to the internet. If you want to learn something, you can go to the internet. We have social media. We have texting and all those kind of things. And you know, so I am for technology. I'm for leveraging. You know, hey, this past Friday, man, um, I love the text that I got from my middle daughter, India, and I'm going to read it because it encouraged me at that moment. And I want to uh, read this text that I got from her. Um, it says this, she says, just randomly sent this text and says, thank you all, for, thank you for all you've taught me and all you are. You're one of the strongest men who I know. I love you so much, Daddy. Thank you for loving, at, living out your calling and changing my life through the power of Jesus and so many others. Um, praise God for that. How many of you have ever got that ta at text when you need it the most and it encouraged you? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Yeah, we do, we get things like that. And, and that's what's so awesome. But, say but. but, too much of technology and being consumed by it, it will hurt your relationships and it will rob you from the intimacy that God wants you to experience in relationships with other people. So today, I want us to jump into a couple of different verses in, in John's Gospel, chapter 13. In this setting, what had happened, Jesus, they had entered the room there where they were going to have their time together and, and have the Last Supper together and, and they were going to commune together. And in that moment when they came into the room, understanding prior to that, there had been an argument about having who's greatest in the kingdom of God. God and, and who's going to be on the right hand, who's going to be on the left and all that. So when they entered the room with the disciples, understanding that there was not a, a complete spirit of camaraderie, but there was a spirit of competition in the room. And so what does Jesus do knowing that he is about to go back to the Father from which he came? He rose to the occasion in order to wash the disciples' feet. Now, in that day and time, it was customary that the lowliest of servant would wash the people's feet before they would sit down and commune for a meal together. In the area there in Jerusalem and all through the area, dust would be as thick as an inch deep on the road. So they would take their sandals off and a servant would wash their feet and then they would lean in on their left arm toward their food and then they would eat with their right and would all lean in toward one another. But no one was willing to wash feet and was not a servant in the room. And the reason there wasn't a lowly servant in the room to do that is because Jesus wanted to teach a huge, huge important lesson about servanthood himself. So he washes all the disciples' feet. We know that in the story, if you read through the first part and all the way up toward the end of the chapter, we know that Judas goes out to betray Jesus. And then Jesus moves on from that point there to tell them something that's so, so important. And I want us to read these two verses together here in John's Gospel, verse 34 and 35. He says, Jesus saying here, he says, so now I am giving you a new commandment. 
love each other. Say those three words with me. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should what? Say those three words again. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. And listen to verse 35. Your, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. My disciples. Now, did Jesus say here that you will be disciples if you have a perfect church attendance? He didn't say that, did he? he? Did he say here, listen, if you have a perfect prayer life, talking to my heavenly Father, you are my disciples. Did he say that? Did he say, if you have a perfect theology, which theology is important, you will be my disciples? Did he say that? No, he said, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my what? My disciples. Disciples meaning learners. That's what it means. Did, did he say here that if you're at Freedom Church, if you will have a Freedom Church window sticker, that you are my disciples? Yeah, how many of you have one of these? By the way, I've seen some of you drive, you don't need one of these. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm calling you out. Some of you wave in traffic, but it's not with your hand. It's with your middle finger if you're not careful. You know, have you been guilty of that? Now, we will give you one of these today if you do not have one when you leave the auditorium, if you want to brag on your church. But all I ask you is, is to act like you're a disciple of Jesus and not of the enemy. Can I get a witness? Right? Okay, let's do that. Also, if you love your church, uh, we have these yard signs that we'll be glad to give you. It says, I love my church, but make sure that you're acting like you love your church in your cul-de-sac, okay? Don't be doing things and block parties that will be unbecoming of Jesus, okay? When you put that sign in your yard. Today, we want to be known for our love, and that's what Jesus is talking about here. I want to look at verse 35 once again. Look what it says. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Now the truth is, today, and I think you'll agree with me, technology is changing relationships. You say, well, what do you mean? Uh, it has its good, but also you and I have got to recognize the bad in technology. We've got to own that. We've got to understand that. And there's a few things that I have seen that's causing this. We have fewer friends and more acquaintances than ever before. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, the average user on Facebook has 338 friends. They're not really friends. A friend is somebody that you do life together face to face. That's a friend that you do life with. When you look at those friends on Facebook, you're not really doing life with them. There might be one or two or maybe three or four or five that you would do life with. You know, and that's something I want to make a point in. You need that 2 a.m. friend. And I ask you this question. Do you have that 2 a.m. friend right now that if you called them at 2 a.m. and asked them to come to your beckoning knee because life has happened to you, would they be there? Or would that person, some people on Facebook, if you called some of them, you called friends, they just might cuss you out and hang up on you. Are you with me? We're in a time that we have fewer friends and we got a whole lot more acquaintances. There was a poll, and I looked at some different stats and polls and things like that. But did you know that 39% of the people in our nation, they have basically, if possible, three, maybe up to five close friends. Do you know that through that study and what they did, <laughs> as much as 14% of the people in our nation may have one friend or two, and it goes worse. It gets much worse than that. So we have fewer friends and more acquaintances. Something else that technology is changing is the fact that we thrive on instant affirmation. You say, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Oh, we love that instant addiction that if we're feeling kind of low and we're feeling kind of bad, we'll take and pop that phone out right there, click, take a selfie, and then you upload it and you post it so you can see how many likes you get and make you feel better about yourself. And you know what the worst thing about this is these people doing that duck lips. Stop it already with the duck lips. I'm so sick of seeing duck lips. If you're Angelina Jolie, she can just smile. She's got duck lips. But my point is, 
We're all about addicted to instant affirmation. We want to feel good about ourselves. We want to get the feedback. We want to hear the dings of how many likes that we're getting and things like that. We want the instant affirmation because we are all about socially thriving. And we can't survive unless we thrive through that instant affirmation. People want the instant feedback. Did you know why we do that? Because there is a chemical that is released in your brain called dopamine every time that you hear a ding from Facebook or you hear a ding from Instagram or you hear a ding from Snapchat. And when you're feeling lonely, lonely in your life, you simply just want to post something so you can get some instant feedback. Because the problem with this generation is they're living for likes and they're longing for love. I'll tell you something else that's changing relationships through technology. We exercise friendships our way. You say, well, what do you mean by that? How many of you here text in the crowd? Raise your hand if you text. Raise your hand. All, raise your hand real high. Be proud of it because you text. All right? Those of you that text, let me ask this question. And if you don't raise your hand, God forbid for lying. How many of you have your read receipt turned off on your texting? Raise your hand. Look, look across the crowd. You say, some of you are thinking, and it's okay. Ignorance doesn't mean you're stupid. Ignorance means you don't know. You say, what does that mean, Pastor? That means you turn your read receipt off on your phone so that whoever sends you a text, you can read their text, and they don't know you ever opened it. Therefore, you can answer that person when you get ready. If you feel like it's worthy of answering their text, you do. If you feel like, mm-mm, ain't got time for that, mm-mm, you ain't going to do it. Now, I do know there's times that you get a text. God forbid, maybe you're in a funeral. You can't answer a text in a funeral. I hope you don't. Or there's something going on at work. I understand that. But the point of it is, we exercise our friendships our way. What I mean by that is, if a friend posts something to Facebook, you can like it or not like it. You can, you can scroll across it, mm, ain't, ain't like worthy, mm, no, that ain't like worthy, mm, that ain't either, mm-mm, no, uh, they didn't like mine yesterday, I'm not liking theirs today. <laughs> yeah, I just keep scrolling. And you decide whether it's worthy of like worthy or not, are you with me? I want you to understand that there are people like this today. All of us get in it. Because here's what we do. You start, and don't look at me like I'm dumb either. You notice they don't like your stuff. So I ain't going to like your stuff. You know what they got now? They got apps that you can download that tells if that person unfollows you. Hmm, ding! Oh, they unfollow. I'm unfollow. I ain't, I'm not just gonna unfollow. I'm defriending them in the name of Jesus. I... That's what people do, man. I'm telling you. If you post, I'm defriending them. I'm def- if you post one more post of, of duck lips, I'm gonna unfollow you. Oh, your products. Oh, products. How many more products you gonna post? Bing. Un- mm-mm. <laughs> Technology is a great thing, and we leverage it for the glory of God here. If you're watching Facebook there right now live, you guys scream and give them some love if we're watching it live. We love you. We love you. And if you're anywhere within driving distance of this campus, please come and be a part of the atmosphere because the church of life is worth the drive, okay? All right? But here's what I'm going to tell you, and I'm being straight with you. Technology is changing relationships. So here's what I want us to do. I want us to get real in relationships. You say, what does that mean? God did not shout from heaven. He showed his love on earth. 
He showed his love on earth. He stripped himself of all heavenly glory and he came in the person of Jesus Christ in order to be with us. That's why they call him Emmanuel, God with us. And that's what Jesus did. So he could come here and we could see what God was. And it was through his son Jesus Christ. And when he became one of us, what did he do? He came here and he lived among people and he loved on the people that ever, all the religious people rejected. He ate and hung out with tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes. God didn't shout his love from heaven. He showed up with his love from heaven in the form of Jesus. And he wants you and I to experience the same real relationships that Jesus expressed and gave us an example of. That's what he wants us to do. So getting real in relationships, there's a couple of things I think is so important. We've got to practice the power of presence. What do you mean? Well, you need to love people face to face, not just through Facebook. It's so important you understand. We need to love people face to face, not just thumb to thumb. It's more than that. Look what, look what the Apostle Paul told the Roman church. It's so, so good. Chapter 12, verse 9 and 10 and 13. Don't just pretend to love others really love them say that with me really love them that's what it says really love them hate what is wrong hold tightly to what is good love each other with what kind of affection say the two words genuine affection take delight in honoring each other never be lazy but work hard serve the Lord enthusiastically when God's people are in need send them a text When God's people are in need, hit like. But just don't hit like. Do the one that's the heart like. Dang, oh, they'll really appreciate that so much. Oh, they're hurting so bad. Man, that's good. I sent them a heart. Oh, I call me. Yeah, they're going to feel that real good right there. They, they just, they're going to be all excited that I took time to do that. No, it says, when God's people are in need, be ready to what? Help them. Help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Love people, really love them. Be present in their lives. Now, let's say you have a friend or you have a coworker. You have somebody in your family that got some bad news. Maybe it was a terrible thing about a health report at the doctor. They're just in shock. Or maybe it was a bad breakup, whether they were about to get married and been high school sweethearts and been engaged, and all of a sudden the engagement's been broke off and they're distraught. Or maybe it's a situation where that you had... <laughs> A family member that lost a job and, and then they don't know how they're going to pay the mortgage. They didn't see it coming. They got mouths to feed, all that kind of stuff. What would be the best way to love them? I'm going to send them a text. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm thinking of you. Uh, good. I'm thinking of you. Huh. Let's, let's park here just for a second. If you have my phone number and you know I go through a bad time, don't ever send me a text that says you're thinking of me. Because let me ask you a question. When has your thoughts ever changed my life? When is your thinking of me ever going to make a difference in the hurting moment that I'm having in my life? Thoughts don't change lives. At least have the common decency to say that you're going to pray for me in the very hardest moments of my life, church. It's so important that we understand that. But you know what you could do? You could do better now. Instead of sending them a text, you could actually, and I know it's hard for you to imagine this, you could actually call their number. Hey, I just called to say I love you. Or call to say, hey, how are you doing? And then wait for a response. And I tell you what, that conversation will go places that you never thought it could and the difference you can make with that phone call in their life. 
Or maybe if we even go a, a step further than that, what if, what if you decide, you know what, I need to help them. I'm going to drop what I'm doing from my busy schedule, and I'm going to take, make an appointment. I'm going to go have lunch with them. I'm going to stop by their house and say, I'm going to be there in 15 minutes. I'm going to take time for them. I'm going to listen to them. And then I'm going to actually reach across the table, hold their hands, and pray with them. Because they need Jesus. And they needed to intervene in their lives in that moment. Let me tell you something, church. There's power in the presence of you being there. And we're letting technology steal away the real relationships. There was a time back several years ago that one of my dearest pastor friends had a situation that went really south in the church that he and his wife were pastoring. And that morning, I had, I was, we had three services in the, in the other auditorium before we moved in here, and I needed to preach those three services. My wife that morning, it was either that Saturday night when we got news of it or that next morning, she jumped in the vehicle and she went two states over, about eight hours driving. After I got done with the last service, I jumped in the car with another friend, and we drove two states over, eight hours. And when I arrived, I didn't go in and say, all right, let me take my Bible out here and I'm going to explain theologically why you're going through the situation that you're going through. No. I just walked in and said, I love you. And I'm hurting with you. It's not the words you say. It's the power of the presence that you cared enough to show up in somebody's life when they're hurting the most. Don't allow technology to steal away the real relationships that God has in your life. It wasn't our words and it wasn't our presence. It's, it wasn't our words, but it was our presence that spoke louder than anything for our love in the moments when they were hurting the most. There is power in your presence look what the bible says in hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 and 25 and we talk about this verse a lot when it comes to church attendance which it does fit it very much so for when it was written but also it talks about our presence in real relationships it says let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works and here's the verse that i'm talking about in that and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. See, it's, it's, it's special, it's powerful when we're willing to take time out of our lives and set aside the schedule and drop what we're doing and go and motivate one another to be able to have acts of love and good works, to be able to encourage someone, to be able to pray with someone, to be able to be sure that we're here worshiping with someone, to be able to lift up our holy hands to Jesus and worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to be able to show someone some love, to be able to cry with someone, to be able to lend someone a hand, to be able to dry their tears, to be able to have a shoulder to cry on to be able to rejoice when they're rejoicing and weep when they're weeping and be there for one another that's what he's talking about here God is a relational God and he created us to love him and we're created to love one another don't miss your opportunities to show love Jesus style Jesus style. It's so important. So easy to just, boom, shoot a text or hit a like button or throw out some kind of simple comment. Yes, and there's nothing wrong with doing those things. Don't mis misconstrue what I'm trying to tell you. But we live in a world that the walls are going up and we're walling each other out. We got gated communities to keep people out. Maybe you'll be more like Jesus. If you'll let people in, invite them to your home, have a meal together, spend time together, face to face, not just thumb to thumb. Some of you right now, you're longing for something more, and it's spiritually. 
Maybe you've given your life to Christ, but there's, there's a spiritual ache in your life. And, and let me tell you what you're missing. You're missing, if you're, you're missing the joy of Christian community if you're not part of a Christian community. And the fact that this is worship, this is not fellowship. We worship our God together. And we lift holy hands unto Him. But what you're missing would be opening up God's Word with other people, praying with other people, doing life with other people, encouraging each other, motivating each other with good works, and being able to help each other and understand through acts of love. And we call that connection groups here at Freedom Church. And here's what I want to tell you. If you're not in a connection group, in six months you'll be gone. Like the thousands of other people that's been a part of this family for just a little while. And they made a conscious choice not to step forward and become part of a group with somebody. To be able to know somebody by the first name. And you know them by the first name. And somebody that you know what's going on in their life. And they know what's going on in yours. You're praying for each other. Caring for one another. Loving each other. I challenge you today. Don't leave here today without saying, you know what? I'm not going to let this happen again. So many people will walk away from church. Well, I didn't know nobody there. I know nobody there. When did you try to get in a group? Well, we didn't. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to email. I don't want to hear nothing at the church. I was here six months. If you don't make a conscious effort to take your step to get in a group, that's your problem, not ours. Because it's one of our core values. Everyone connects. We grow larger in this setting here, but we grow smaller and we keep it small because we have a small group. I love my small group. You know, the last four weeks I haven't been able to be at mine. I cannot wait to get there tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Cannot wait. Last two weeks have been classes teaching here. Two weeks before that was in Israel. I can't wait to get there. I've missed it. I long for it to be with my brotherhood. So let me tell you, if you don't, if you don't have a group, right on the back of your connection card, I won't, please call me. I want to be in a connection group. Can you please help me one to fit with my season of life? We'll be glad to do it. Or you can go out to the kiosk, out to the right, outside those doors. They'll be standing there waiting on you to walk up and say, hey, we'll help find a group that fits your night, your schedule, your season of life, where you're at. But I challenge you to do that. It's so, so, so important. So I want to tell you, practice the power of presence. But also, one more thing. When you get there, give them your un divided attention you say what do you mean man a lot of times when we get face to face with somebody man what do we do first thing we do whoop out our phone start answering text. oh excuse me just say, oh wait a minute oh, you wouldn't believe this post i just made oh it's so cool I, oh, you wouldn't believe how many likes i got who cares when somebody's sitting across from you that's hurting and they need your undivided attention. Who really cares? I go into restaurants, and what's a shame about this? You go into restaurants, you'll see a family, and there'll be four or five of them sitting around. Everybody's on a device. I've been guilty of that in my own home. One of my daughters called us out. We were all sitting in the living room. They come in, and everybody's sitting around on a device. I said, uh-oh, busted. Yeah, been there, done that. I've done that myself, and I've been guilty of those kind of things. But... Don't just be physically present. Give them your undivided attention. Look what it says in 1 Peter 4 and 8. Look what it says. It says, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. The person you're with is the most important one at that moment. I want you to understand that. And I want you to know that whenever you are out there with people, man, be there with the people. I want you to know that sometimes some of you are thinking, well, I don't have that problem, Pastor. Listen, you can be watching TV and someone come in your home. If you're not expecting them or something, they come in, give them the due respect to cut the tube off. Cut the TV off. Or you're sending a message to them, I don't really care if you're here or not. I'm into my show. Booyah! You got TiVo, you can record it, go back and watch it later and skip all the commercials. That's what I love. Or maybe you're on your computer. You're on the internet, you're serving, whatever it is. Listen, I'm telling you, we are suffering from a technological advancement that the relationships are going to be suffering and they may cease if we continue the direction that we're in. Listen to me, parents. You've been guilty of your kids begging for your attention and they're wanting to be in your lives and you have got your face into a screen when the kids are right in front of you. And that season's not going to last too long. I just told one parent yesterday, I said, listen, let me speak into your life for a minute. 
enjoy this moment that seems like it's the hardest because it's going to go and it's going to go away and you're going to be like my wife and I we're empty nesters and it just seemed like those three girls come through our home and just like a snap they were gone don't miss that opportunity to invest in our lives it's okay to look at the screen let them take a nap or when they're at school or when they're away that's fine but man when you're with them be with them it's so important that you understand that because here's what's happening to people. We, we have someone in our presence, we're guilty of giving them divided attention instead of undivided attention and being face to face with someone who matters to us. Every time there's a ding, every time there's a chirp, every time there's a whistle, every time there's a beep, every time there's a buzz. Oh, I got to get that. Woo, I got to get that real quick. I can't miss that. Oh, look at that funny pic. Let me like that right there. Oh, there's a text. What's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool right there. Oh, Another duck lips. I am unfollowing you. That's the way we are. Can you miss somebody liking your post or liking your pic or liking your video? I may be wrong, but I think this is the truth. At the end of our lives, we're not going to be saying, I sure wish I could have got a few more likes. I wish I could have some more likes. You know what you need? You don't need more likes. We need to show more love. It's so important. So let me say to you, maybe if this is an issue for you and it seemed to take presence over your relationships, maybe you need to set some technological rules. Maybe you need to say, you know what, these phones are going to be docked at a certain time at night, and I don't care if the world ends. I'm not picking that thing up. Somebody needs you bad enough, they may know where you live at, right? Right? Somebody's situation sometime is not your emergency. You've got a family too. Not saying that we don't be there for each other, but sometimes you've got to put these things away. Dinner time, they don't even come to the table. I mean, they're grounded for a year if I even show up with it. Don't say I said that to you kids and they'll, they'll hate me as a pastor of this church. You know, it's crazy. You sit in bed at night, two of you and husband and wife, you sitting there, both of you on technology. You look over at her guys and you're thinking, hmm, send her a text. Baby, you in the mood? Didn't send that thing. That's bad. Because what's going to be real bad is when she sends you back one. Hashtag headache. Hashtag not tonight. Hashtag maybe next week. <laughs> Look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us, say us, Show the truth by our actions. Get involved in the lives of the people around you. Not just a text. I mean, it might be a situation where that you can't do anything but send a text, and that's okay. But not just text, not just a post, not just a like. Listen, the bottom line of this whole message, I'm going to give you just four words. Get there. And be there. Did you get that? Let me do it one more time. Get there and then be there when you get there. You're talking about taking your relationships to, the, to a whole nother level. I guarantee you it will. I want to say how thankful I am personally to this church and to people in this church that I've been doing life with for a long time. I remember when I had a couple of surgeries that I've had. and I'm like the bionic man. When I run, it's... You got metal hips, you know? I remember when I had a surgery, Keith over here showed up my house of food. I didn't know it was coming. never forgot that people here 
come up and, and look me dead in the eye when they know the weight of ministry and they try to understand the weight and they try to vicariously imagine what we try to do to keep this ship going in the right direction for God's glory, not for us. And they come up and they ask the question to me and say, how are you doing? And then they wait for response. The times that I tried to cover up on my face things that I was personally going through so I could minister to you but then the, through the Holy Spirit of God someone says can we gather around you and pray over you and your wife it means more to me than 10,000 worlds like the one that we're walking on today that's what real relationships is all about There's nothing wrong with leveraging technology, but there must be balance. Balance. I refuse to be mastered by anything but loving and following the master, Jesus Christ. I'm not going to live for likes. I'm not going to be a slave to the screen. I want to be a lover of Jesus, and I want to be a lover of people. Man, when we get that, we can see God do some amazing things through our lives. Remember once again, God didn't shout his love down from heaven. He showed his love in the person of Jesus Christ. And may that be our personal goal as God's people, that we show the love through our actions. I want to read John 13, verse 34 and 35 in the NIV for one reason. I read it earlier in the NLT, but the last five words is really, really awesome. A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone, say everyone, will know that you are my disciples. Now look at these last five words. What's it going to take? If you love one another let's pray father right now i thank you for this awesome day and i thank you for the beauty of these people here that's in this auditorium the beauty of the people on the other side of that screen that's locally globally wherever they're at god thank you for each and every one of them father Thank you for the opportunity that we can even leverage technology, that we can have this service going live via internet all over the world. And God, we can have the technology to have these uh, messages to come up later on smart devices and the internet and on our website and all that. That's a cool thing. But God, on the other side of that, of the good, there can oftentimes be some bad. And God, I just pray, God, right now, Lord, for every person under the sound of my voice, if they see that problem or there's an issue where that we seem to be totally tethered to these devices all the time and it's taken away the real relationships you want us to have may we recognize that today through the convicting power of your Holy Spirit with heads bowed and eyes closed I want to ask you right now and I ask you to be honest and I believe you, you totally will with no one looking around how many of you right now would be really honest to say it has became a problem in my life and I, it's an issue and I know that I need balance in the technological era that we're living in in my personal life. Would you raise your hand right now and be honest? God bless you. God bless you. Hands are going up all over everywhere. God bless you. I see the hands everywhere. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Would you pray as I pray with you and say, God, give me balance. Father, right now, God, thank you for these that have lifted their hands. I pray for them right now, God, that they'll find balance. God, it's not one extreme one way or the other, but God, that we don't let it, the technology that we've been using as a privilege, God, to become something that's going to forsake our relationships in life. So I pray for each one as they pray, God, that they find balance in you, God. They find some, some different things that they can do, God, to make sure that they are exercising the relationships that you've given them in the people's lives that they're in. 
Some of you need Christian community, and you know you need to take that step today. You need face-to-face. You need love, and you need to give love. I challenge you today, right now, to say, I'm not going to make excuses about connection groups any longer. I'm going to get in one. I'm going to write on the back of my card, call me, I need a group, or I'm going to go to the kiosk today. If that's you today and you know that you need the Christian community and you need to quit making excuses about being in a group right now, would you lift your hand real high and say, that's me today. Lift your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hands are going up. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for lifting your hand. Father, right now, God, give them the group that's going to find those 2 a.m. friends that they need right now in the name of Jesus. Let me say to you, if you're here today and you seem to be lonely and you seem to be going to social media to be able to fill that void and trying to get that instant affirmation and you're thriving on that, but you know you need Christian community. You know you need others. But most of all, you know that there's emptiness in your life and you know that you never gave your life to Jesus. But until you ask Christ to come in your heart, he's the only one who will fill that God-shaped hole in your life. Because the tomb is empty, your life can be full in him. And right now, through the power of his convicting spirit, and you know your heart starts to pound right where you're at. You know that's the, you know right now, and you sense it, it's the Lord Jesus Christ through his spirit knocking on your heart, wanting in your life. And it's up to you to open your heart to him. If that's you today and you know you need Jesus, you need to give your life to him for the very first time in a crowd of people this size, would you be honest enough, no one looking around, just simply raise your hand right now. Lift your hand. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? God bless you. Anyone else? Hands are going up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now listen, let me tell you something right now. The enemy hated the fact that you raised your hand, but understand you're about to have the one that's greater in you than the one in the world, and you're going to have a peace like you've never had. So listen to me closely. Would you pray to him right now, right where you're at, those of you that lift your hand and say, Lord Jesus, I'm inviting you into my life. I open my heart to you right now. Just tell him that in your spirit. You pray right where you're at. Just tell him, say, Lord, would you please accept me as your son or as your daughter? I give my life wholeheartedly to you would you tell him say I believe that you it's knocked on my heart I believe you live for me I believe you died for me and I believe you arose for me now simply tell him say Lord I confess all my sins and all my wrongdoing to you please forgive me I ask you to save me in this moment. My life is yours forever. Now you just receive that sweet, feel that peace that just passed through the top of your head, the bottom of your feet. The Bible tells us it's a peace that passes all understanding. English words can't explain it. It is the power of Almighty God. You received His peace, His plan, His purpose, His forever in your life. And if that just happened to you right now, thank Him for it. And He's going to give you the power of His Holy Spirit to touch your life and to lead your life and to walk out with you today. When you feel like the world is against you, he, hey, when He's for you, who can be against you? you. So here's what I want to tell you to do. Those of you that just lifted your hand, I want you to be sure that you mark your card that gave your life to you, to Jesus Christ right now. We're going to follow up with you. We're going to talk with you. We're going to help you in your next steps with Jesus. You just entered the family of God. Let's give God praise today, church. Come on now. Let's give God praise today.